Hi, we understand that many of you are asking actually how to plot the best feed line. Well, do not fret, we actually made a video just for you. So sit back and learn. Well, besides very good physics practical videos that we have created, we also create very good physics content. So go to our bio, check it out, our Project Lightbox series. We have videos on physics and also on geography and also primary school math and sciences. So check it out. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the tips and techniques to draw the best fit line. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five points here, which I mark in red so that you can see it clearly. So you always try to bring a long ruler and you want to have the ruler to be transparent so that you are able to see the points. So where do you start? So I'll normally like to carry the points first, means I will go approach from the bottom and then I find the lowest ones, okay, like this. So I place it like this first. So two points on the line, three points as floating. So it means that I need to push the ruler upwards. So I don't start uh, like this. Then I can't see. So it's very hard for you to adjust. So by doing it like this, okay, everything is visible. So I need, I know that I need to push up. Okay. So for best fit line, you don't. Uh, you all know that it doesn't have to cut through all the points, but it has to be as close to all the points as possible. So we have three points as floating. So these two points especially is going to pull the line up. So it's going to pull it like this. So when I have it like this, what happens is that this point is on the line. This is two is higher, this two is lower. So we are kind of trying to balance it, but you see that this is a little bit far off. So I can try by rotating the line, you see. But if I rotate, this becomes a lot further. So I try my best, okay, to see what is the best that I can do. Okay, or what I can do is I allow this point to pull my line up. Then I rotate, I push this whole thing up. So now in this case, no points are actually on the line. But I have one, two, three at the bottom, two on top, and everything is fairly close to the line. So I think I will take this. Because there are three points underneath, I will try to pull the point line downwards, middle, down more towards those points to give them more weightage. So this is my best fit line. So do you see this? All right. So this is one way. Okay, let's have another example. Okay, example number two. So again, one, two, three, four, five, five points. So my ruler again approach from the bottom. Right, so find the uh, kind of like the lowest one so that we can kind of like carry. So you see, so once I touch this two, you notice that it's actually pretty all right. Okay, if one, two, three, these two, three are on the line, two are actually floating upwards. So uh, I want to bring it a little bit higher. Right, so this is my best fit. So you have one two, three, kind of below the line, but very close, two on top. So you don't want to just do this. So when you do this, the line is too low because two is on the line, three are all floating. So you want to push it higher a little bit. Okay. All right. So we are allowing to give the, these two points a little bit more voice to our line. So this is our best fit again, like this. So you see, one two three bottom two on top but it's kind of balanced and they are very close okay third example right so now we have decreasing gradient one two three five points again approach from below right so immediately i can see yep right so these are the two lowest so then i have one two three floating on top so i need to push it up a little bit more but in this case Right, I notice that I can rotate my line. See, I rotate. So this, I anchor it here. I push this up. So what I'm going to get is I will get this one, this one on the line, two on top and one below. So I think this is beautiful. Right, so let me show you. This is on the line, all three on the line. These two are slightly off. So this is my best fit. Okay, last example. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So I approach from below. 
So what I'm gonna what I'm seeing now is uh, so these are the two lowest point, right? So two higher, and then you have one of these that is very far off. So you have to make a decision now. So let's say if I'm going to allow this point to affect my line, I'm going to have the line that looks like this. Okay. So with this line, you see that this is very far. Okay. Right. So what you have is so let's say if this cuts in the middle, three floating on top, one below. Right. Okay. So this is still very far. So if I want it to be nearer, you see what happens. Right, so you notice that there is this one point that's pulling everything out of whack. So you have to make a decision. So let's say if this is your uh, experiment that you are doing to to solve a problem, what do you do? Redo this part, okay? But if this is your practical exams, you have no time already. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take a look at this point. I will just use these four points, okay? Because this four is clearly right class has a good cluster together where that point is far off so i just use these two so one two below i push it up rotate my ruler so now this four is fairly close okay so then what am i going to do with this so if it's your practical exam so what you do is that you shift the point down yourself and you change the table all right so you want to do that rather than just leave this point off then in a sense, they will either deduct points from the accuracy of your experiment. Okay, right. So you only get to do your exam once. So find that dependent reading. Okay. So let's say the dependent scale is here. This is your no. This is the independent scale. This is your dependent scale. All right. So then you shift the point down here, somewhere here. Then you change the table. Okay. All right. Last tip that you have that I have for you. Okay. So let's say if you are doing your combined science paper, right? There are two parts. There's the chemistry part and there is the physics part. So for the physics part, you will need a good maybe 30 minutes at least to finish. So let's say time is running out. You only have 15 minutes left. So what are you going to do? So this is my suggestion for you. So if you have very little time left and you have a whole table, don't do all the points. If you get to choose three points to do, do the first one, last one, and do the middle one. All right? Then on your graph, you are going to have your three points, right? And that's where you are able to still draw kind of like a best fit. Then you reverse engineer these two data for you. So this is mainly for exams, where you have one shot, something goes wrong. Because of that, you have not enough time. So you do that. You don't do one, two, three. All right, then you try to extrapolate upwards. That's, that's more dangerous. Do the beginning end and do the middle. All right, and you definitely don't do, oh no, I'm just going to do here, do here, do here. And then you do everything, and then your graph is blank, and then the rest of the part is blank. No, don't do that. Because your graph and the last few questions carries a lot of marks. All right, so if you only get to do two data, which two data do you do? Yes, you're right. Do the first and the last one. Then draw your line, then go back, fill this in. Then at least you get all your calculation onwards. So I hope this uh, video is helpful for you. All right. So with more practice, you're going to get faster with your best fit line. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Bye. So have you learned how to plot the best fit line already? Well, beside all the practical videos that we have created, we have also very good physics content videos. So go to our bio, check out our Project Lightbot teaching series. We have videos on physics and geography, and not only that, primary school math and sciences. I'm sure it will benefit you. So go and check it out.